welcome back to daytime. Well, if you have a pet at home, just like beautiful little Ernie here, who's all curled up in our studio this morning, one of the things you always want to be sure of is that your pet is safe. If you happen to be reading through this past weekend's Kitchener Waterloo record on Saturday, you'll have no doubt found the, the very sad story about a, a dog by the name of Ozzy, who unfortunately got into some poison that, that shouldn't have happened and, and owners ended up losing their dogs. So today we're going to talk a little bit about pet safety and Dr. Louise Longley joins us. She's the veterinarian at Hesper Animal Hospital. It's good to have you here, Louise. Hi, Susan. Thank you. And, and such a sad story from the weekend. Mm. It, it just breaks your heart and especially for me because poor Ozzy passed away in a, in a similar manner to a dog that friends of ours have and it, mm -hmm. it happened because of antifreeze. Mm -hmm. And there's some really sad things about Ozzy. One of them is he was only two Mm. So to die at such a young age, and um, he was such a sweet, sweet, lovely dog. That makes it harder. I'm going to try not to get emotional. And then the final thing is this was such a preventable tragedy, and so that's one reason that we're talking about Ozzy today. Um, we're hoping that maybe he didn't die in vain. If some of the viewers can go home with the message and some information, then um, we're hoping that, you know, it wasn't for Yeah, we're nothing. seeing a picture of Ozzy now too, and we want to thank his owners for providing us with the, the pictures today of their dog, because this is a hard time for them, because pets are a member of the family, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we want to keep them safe. And this tragedy, as you mentioned, could have been avoided. And I guess and without going into the entire story and, and everything that happened, the long and the short of it is Ozzy ended up getting into antifreeze mm -hmm. and, and ingesting antifreeze, and that eventually led to his demise. Yeah, and if viewers are interested in reading about him again, if they didn't catch the story in the record, um, I've uploaded some information onto our webpage, hasperamohospital.com. I've put a link on there back to the record article and then also some links to some informative articles about antifreeze poisoning in dogs. So, you know, that's sort of going to be review of some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today. Well, Animals getting into antifreeze can happen in a couple of ways. It can be as accidental as, you know, we, we store it in our garage, mm -hmm. you know, and you think that the dog could get out into the garage and be into it in no time at all. But unfortunately, it's also used as a method of disposing of vermin. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened, or they suspect happened in Ozzy's case. Yeah, so um, one of the take home messages is this is not, first of all, it's illegal to poison things like raccoons and wildlife, and it's inhumane. We'll talk more about kidney failure as one of the end results of antifreeze poisoning, but I wouldn't wish that on any animal, not someone's pet and not a wild animal, even if it's a pest. There mm -hmm. are people who are professionals who will dispose, not dispose, but you know, live trap these animals and relocate them for us, and they do it humanely. So let's leave it to them. Exactly. Well, the problem with antifreeze and this type of poison is if your pet happens to get into it, you have an extremely short window of time to get your pet the help it needs. Mm -hmm. And thanks, Susan, because I think that's the most important message and the lesson to be learned from Ozzy's death is with any poison, it's absorbed from the stomach within a few hours. With antifreeze, you have peak blood levels in three hours. So if someone knows that their animal's gotten into something and they're not sure if it's a poison, but definitely if they know, they need to call the vet right away and they really literally only have an hour or two. So if you're jumping on the internet and reading up about this before you decide what to do, it's already too late. You need to pick up the phone, call the vet, call the emergency clinic if your vet's close and act immediately. That's the first point. Well, and, and that's part of the problem because you don't know right away. I mean, if your pet starts to act a little bit strange or unusual and that, you don't necessarily think of poison right away. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they get sick just like humans do too. They have off days just like we do. And by the time you've finally decided, no, this is something more, that can be the point where it's too late. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the treatment when an animal is initially poisoned is to induce vomiting. And there's a variety of medications or drugs that we use for that. The most common one is a drug called apomorphine. And we give it to them if they vomit, then they don't absorb the product. But as you mentioned, unfortunately sometimes people don't know so the next lesson I want to be learned from Ozzy's death is the signs of antifreeze poisoning okay so once the toxin has been absorbed the animal's going to show signs as if they're drunk it acts in the brain very similar to how alcohol so they'll be you know the animal will be stuporous they'll be stumbling around just acting drunk and if you see your animal acting drunk and especially if you know it hasn't gotten into any, any alcohol in the home then it probably has antifreeze poisoning and you need to get it in immediately there is an antidote, um, 
and it can be given during that phase and it's only within 18 hours of ingestion. Okay. So you have a very short time to act. If your animal's acting drunk, you get it in right away for treatment and there's still a chance it can be saved. But you had mentioned before, when you're talking about death by this type of poisoning, it's a, a painful process and, mm -hmm. and it's not a, a death that you would wish on any animal, whether no. it's vermin or your pet. No. Um, when an an the final stage, you know, the first stage of antifreeze poisoning is the drunk stage and then there's, you know, the final stage which is kidney failure and that's really horrible and how bad the failure is depends on the dose ingested. So sometimes if it's not a lot, we can still treat them with aggressive intravenous fluid therapy and what happens to produce the kidney failure is that ethylene glycol, that's the active ingredient in antifreeze, is metabolized by the body and the metabolites are what are poisonous and one of the things that happens is there are these crystals that are formed, they're called calcium oxalate crystals. We can recognize them on a urine specimen, so that's one of the clues in Ozzy's case that he had gotten in, you know, and into antifreeze. We saw these crystals in his urine and that along with the blood work that showed kidney disease, we knew. Um, but that's what causes, one of the big things that causes the kidney failure. They literally clog up the kidneys and the kidneys can't do their job. And poor Ozzy, I mean, he had so many in his urine. I can't even imagine what his kidneys were like. But the kidneys swell, that's very painful. And then kidney failure is bad. Well, and you wonder, what would make a dog or any animal want to take in, <laughs> you know, antifreeze? But apparently, it, it's got a fairly sweet taste to it, so mm -hmm. it is attractive to them. It tastes really good to animals. It's very attractive. And they don't need to take much. A cat, the average cat, a teaspoon, that's it. Really? And a dog, like Ernie's size, three tablespoons, which really, I mean, if it's leaking in your driveway, that's probably not wow. that much. That's enough to kill Ernie. Well, and no wonder, I know that you'd brought the antifreeze along as a prop today, and one of the first things you said was, I, you know, it's sealed, it's still closed, but I'm not taking any chances. Let's set it back away from Ernie. Mm -hmm. Well, no wonder three tablespoons is all a little guy like him needs to mm -hmm. do that type of damage. We'll keep it even further back now. Yeah. But just some great advice and things mm -hmm. to think of when you know, you're looking at either getting rid of vermin or keeping your pets safe. Mm -hmm. Some great advice and more advice available from Louise at the, the website and you can go there for more great information. Thank you so much for joining us. Right. Thank you, Ernie, Susan. you've been a good boy as always. <laughs> and we're back in just a moment. Stay with us.